everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. If you are new, um, a big warm welcome. Today's video is something a little bit different. I wanted to share my tips and my experiences on how to sleep train your baby. I've got, I'm a mum of two if you are new to my channel and my name is Julie. Um, I've got an eight year old and I've also got Mason who is nearly 18 months old now. Um, I should say sorry Olivia is eight, just turned eight. Um, now the whole point of this video is to try, I'm not an expert in any way shape or form, I'll just put that out there but um, it's basically trying to help people if they are having, they might be pregnant and they might be looking into how to get your baby to sleep through or problems with babies not sleeping. Um, I know that when I was pregnant, especially after I had Mason, because that's when the, the problem started, that I was looking for videos like this and I wanted some tips and help and we got to that desperate stage where I just wanted help really and advice from people that could, anyone who could give it to us. Um, so I thought why not do a video of my experiences with with Mason um, and sort of share how we changed his sleeping patterns, how we changed his routine, all the things that associated him not sleeping, helping him not sleep um, and just explain what I did and if that can help anybody then that's great. Um, as I say I'm not an expert. But, and it might not work for, for everybody, but it worked for us. We followed it quite religiously. Um, and all I can say is it worked for us within a week. And that was with Mason. He was quite poorly at the time when we started implementing it. So it probably would have happened a little bit sooner. But we we were really lucky, I think, and it happened quite quickly. Um, maybe for other people it might take a little bit longer, or for some people I know it, it only takes a few days, but for us it did happen quite quickly. Um, I'll start off with a bit of a backstory. So with Olivia, we didn't actually have any problems with Olivia. We were really lucky. She slept through when she was six weeks old and we used to give her a dummy before she went down, we used to give her a bottle in the cart and she went down at seven o'clock and she slept all the way through until seven and we don't, well we didn't realise how lucky we were with Olivia, we just thought that all babies were like that, she was our first and we just thought this was normal. Um, everybody kept saying how lucky we were um, and we were just like oh yeah you know yeah, I suppose, and we didn't really think anything of it. So when we had Mason, um, we didn't expect him to do the same because obviously all babies are different, we're not that naive, but we didn't think we'd have the problems that we had with Mason. So when Mason obviously was born, he hit, he stopped, obviously he would wake up as a normal baby every two to three hours for his feeds. So that was all normal and that obviously we took you know, hand in hand with becoming a new parent and, you know, we knew we were going to have to get up with him in the early stages. But it was when he stopped, when he started to drop sort of his, more of his nighttime feeds, um, he was probably getting up for one feed in the morning and he was sort of sleeping through, but he wasn't waking up. At this point, he wasn't, he wasn't waking up for a bottle. He was just waking up because... He was associating things to help him to get back to sleep. So what when we got to our desperate stage, um, at this point Mason was waking up between three and four times in the night and it could have been it could have been every few hours. It just was a mixed bag. Every night was different, but it was a horrible night. We never ever got a consistent seven, six hours sleep. Um, sometimes five hours sleep, um, sometimes four hours sleep as I say every night was different and you never knew what you were going to get and I just remember waking up one morning and thinking well, we need to do something about this and Adam and me were just saying you know we need to change something because this is just getting worse, we're going backwards not forwards with his sleep, it's not fair on him, it's not fair on us, it wasn't fair on Olivia, she had to get up for school and things at the time. So we just bit the bullet and we were desperate. So I started to research different things and I came across a Facebook page and I also came across a YouTube channel um, about the Baby Whisperer. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this before, but um, she has got her own programs and you can buy, 
you can buy PDFs, you can buy books, you can buy videos, I think you can buy audio books, things like that. But for me, I just researched and read up and just watched a few videos and that was that was enough for us to get where we needed to be. Um, and basically it's all to do with the baby whisperer, she's all to do with um, associations. So what your baby associates to help them to get to sleep basically. So that can be anything from rocking the baby, cuddling the baby, just holding the baby for too long, patting it on the back while it goes off to sleep, um, a bottle, a dummy, anything like that, um, music in the background, things like that, anything that's gonna associate, they associate that as helping them to, to fall to sleep basically. So what we were doing was we were giving Mason his bottle pretty much as he was just literally before he was going down and sometimes he'd even have his bottle finished off in the cot while he was going to sleep. We'd also give him a dummy. So it he's always had his white noise. He's had his white noise on since he was newborn and that has, I must add, that's never ever changed. He's, he's still got his white noise now and as I say he's 18 months old. Um, because that's just something that he's used to. I don't really see that as an aid as such. Um, it's just sort of like a nightlight or a back, background noise that helps him to sort of just, it's more of a, it's more of a sort of routine. It's a cue for him to go to bed, like when we put in him in his sleep bag, that's a cue for him, you know, he knows that that's bedtime. Um, and that's another thing that I'd also try and mention to you, that if you are obviously serious about changing your child's sleeping ha habits or trying to get them into a routine, start with cues so that they know that it is bedtime so put if you're going to put them in a sleepy bag put them in that if they're going to have a nightlight on or white noise things like that will, will just help them to understand you know n like low lights and things like that will help them understand that it is night time and it's bedtime um so in in relation to mason's bottle and dummy we just we just thought oh you know it's helping him, soothing him, it will, you know, get him off to sleep. And initially, yes, it does, but every time he was waking up, he wasn't waking up because he was hungry, he was waking up because his dummy had fell out. So we'd get up three, four, five times a night, keep putting his dummy in, um, because he, he needed that dummy to get him back to sleep again, but he needed they need to learn to be able to, you know, go to sleep themselves and soothe themselves off to sleep, so sleep training them to be able to go to sleep or back to sleep themselves. Um, so the dummy was just basically hindering that. So us getting up all the time, putting his dummy in, it just wasn't helping. The bottle, he, if it wasn't the dummy, he wanted something to suck on in the night, so we'd then grab the bottle and it was still in his cot. And then we'd get up and we'd, you know, tap him off to sleep or, you know, rub his back. As soon as we came away, he'd start crying and then we'd get back up and we'd soothe him again. And we'd just continue and it was just a vicious circle. And everything that we thought we were doing right, because we, n we never had to do that with Olivia, we were doing wrong. And it might seem common sense and quite obvious now, but at the time I think you can get stuck in a rut in just doing the same thing and not actually realising that you're not you're not helping them you're hindering them so as i say that's when i started to look into the baby whisperer and if you are going to do this the only advice i could probably say to you is that you've got to prepare yourself to have a horrible maybe few days a horrible week of not so great sleep it is going to be obviously up and down for the first week but honestly if it means that you're going to get sleep or you know, consistent sleep for you and your whole family for the next foreseeable future, it, I'd do it all over again every time because it is well worth it. As I say, it worked for us. Um, so we, at, st at the start, to start Mason off, it was a gradual thing. Um, so we started, we, I read that if you were gonna give them a bottle, you'd have to give them the bottle 
say half an hour to an hour before they actually go to sleep so that that breaks the association with the bottle soothing him to then help him to go to sleep. The same with the dummy, take the dummy away say 15 minutes to half an hour before they go to sleep. Yes, they're initially going to cry and you know they might kick off and things like that but they do they do get used to the routine and now Mason understands that that's what's happening because they're, the, they're his cues to be able to go to sleep and it's bedtime. Also, um, you know, before they go to bed, after he's had his bottle, read them a little story. Don't take them straight to bed. Read them a little story or have a little play just for 10 minutes. Nothing too, you know, stimulating. Just soft, you know, a soft play with toys or books and things like that. Just again to break the association that it's bottle, bed, and then sleep because you just need to break all association with everything to help them go into sleep. And then, you know, put them down, pat them a couple of times and just say, right, shh, no night now and it's time to go to sleep. If they have a night light on, let them have the night light on. If they have, you know, pitch black, Mason doesn't like any light. He's pitch black with his white noise on and then we just bring the door to and at first they you know they will cry Mason cried for so we use the technique of every 10 minutes if he was still crying then we'd go in and we just pat his back a couple of times shh na night and then come away and then leave him be he'd obviously cry again leave him another 10 minutes and each time you do that by I think the third or fourth time he was fast asleep um, and that is something that worked quite quickly in terms of going in. He knew that we were still there, um, obviously, you know, and we weren't going to leave him, but he, it was time to go to bed. He needed to go to sleep. And yes, at first he did, he did wake up a couple of times in the night and it was horrific, the crying. Um, but again, you know, there was no bottles, there was no dummies. It was just a couple of pats and then back down again. We'd leave him to cry again, we'd time it. You do obviously have to time it at first and things like that. But as I say, it's worth doing, it's worth, it's worth having that horrible week, trust me, to just get your life back in terms of sleep. And we all know as parents that you know, you can't function without sleep. You're not a good parent if you don't have sleep. So for us, we we were desperate. We just needed to try something. And I personally um, would recommend the Baby Whisperer. Um, as I say, I, I don't know anybody that has done it firsthand. Um, it was my first time of just researching it and trying it out on Mason. And we were lucky, as I say, it worked, it worked quite quickly and he was poorly in that week. So it probably would have happened sooner. Um, but as I say, if you are having troubles or you are struggling or you just want to, um, you know, be prepared if you are pregnant in terms of, you know, what could help you help you get your baby into a routine or sleep training, things like that then um, I definitely look into the Baby Whisperer. Um, but if you have any questions or anybody um, wants to, um, you know, comment on anything below, then please, you know, I'm more than happy to, to have a chat with you and give you some advice on what worked for us in more depth. Um, but yeah, just um, don't, <laughs> don't be scared of it. If you are struggling, just throw yourself in you know you've got to do it as a team and I promise you it, w it will work. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to my channel don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I look forward to making some new videos next week. Bye!